everyone. Welcome to Wine Down Wednesdays. I'm your host, Paula Taylor, and this is episode 74. So just one brief announcement this evening. I've mentioned that the Dimensional Frequency Expansion page on my website is now live. You can go to paulataylorenergy.com, click on the DFE tab, learn more about DFE. But I also wanted to let you know that I will have more DFE offerings coming in the future. I'm going to be offering online Zoom intro to DFE and Emerald activations. And then beyond that, I'll be offering Amethyst activations as well. I got a little bit way late. I'm going to talk about that tonight. So I'm a little bit behind. I wanted to send out an email with some class dates or at least some kind of options or maybe polls about when dates, what dates and what times might work better for people. And um, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. So go to my website, paulataylorenergy.com. Go to the bottom of the page, subscribe to my email list. I don't send out spam. I don't send out emails actually probably often enough, but I do try to keep you informed that way. And if you're interested in doing an in-person or a Zoom class or learning more about DFE, that's going to be the best way to get updates as we move forward here. So tonight we're going to talk about the art of rest. And this topic came out of some forced downtime I just had to take in this last week. I had a couple of medical procedures that pretty much knocked me completely flat. And so it got me thinking about rest because the first thing I was thinking about is is kind of what rest is not because I was having a lot of pain and so I wasn't moving much. And some people might say like, oh, you got some rest, but if, if you're in pain, it's not restful. So I started thinking about, you know, what makes something restful? And, and also what rest is for the different aspects of our being, because our physical body asks for rest in a different way than say our mental and emotional bodies. And, and these are equally important, but the way that rest looks might be different for different aspects of ourselves. I talk a lot about yoga. One of the reasons I love restorative yoga is because I feel like that provides some physical, emotional, and mental rest for me. One of the reasons I love meditation is that that's a great way to do some mental, emotional, and sometimes physical rest as well. So rest can look different for different aspects of our being. But it can also look different for each person. It's a very personalized experience. So as I was kind of thinking into, you know, what is rest and what does rest look like, I started thinking about rest in terms of art. Because when you think about art, different mediums, media, different forms of art speak to different parts of ourselves differently, as well as to each one of us differently. Someone might be really into jazz music as an art and someone else might be really into modern abstract visual art. There's all sorts of different types of art that we may be interested in or that may kind of feed us. And so art is also expressed in many different ways. And and that's kind of, all of this was kind of coming up for me when I was thinking about rest, the fact that art really feeds us, rest really feeds us, and that different kinds of art feed different aspects of our being. And, and different people get fed by different types of art. So I, I was thinking about all these differences, but then I started thinking about sort of the commonalities to art, because I think there are definitely commonalities to all different artistic forms. And one of them, I would say, is presence. So art requires presence. And and no matter what kind of art form you think about, whether you're thinking about music or visual arts, theatrical arts, any kind of art, essentially requires the artist, the expressor of art, to be fully present in the moment. And I think a lot of times that's what makes the difference for this true experience of art or a deeper experience of art versus maybe something that doesn't quite sit right. I, As a musician, I'm going to talk about music because of course I am, but as a musician, I've had multiple experiences throughout my life where I felt really present 
and I could feel everyone else who was playing with me, let's say, in an ensemble was really present. And so then all of a sudden, we had that gestalt experience. We had this experience where where the, the sum of the parts of us was more, the whole of us together was more than the sum of each of our individual parts. We were able to create something together that was beyond what any of us might have created individually because we were completely present in the moment. So that's one thing that I think we're going to talk a little bit more about how this applies to rest. I'm going to get to that, but I'm, I'm talking about it in terms of art right now because this is kind of how it came to me. So the other thing that came to me in terms of art, and there's all sorts of commonalities and, you know, we could spend hours listing all the different things about art that maybe, you know, different types of art have in common. But but in terms of what I was thinking about and, and the fact that rest is actually an art, the other thing that came to me was intuition. So anybody who's trained in any kind of art will probably tell you that part of your training is learning the rules. And, and what they typically will tell you is like, you need to learn the rules before you can break the rules because you have to have some sort of a foundation. So you, so you learn the rules, you internalize the rules, but then eventually you get more into this intuitive feel. You get into this gut feel of, you know, like the experiences I'm talking about where I, I really connected with other musicians. There's this intuitive kind of connection, this energetic connection that happens that's beyond, let's say, the music that's written on the page or, or what the conductor is doing or, you know, whatever kind of ensemble or art it is. A big part of art is that intuition, that connection to your creativity, which comes through intuition. So what does this have to do with rest? Because I started out talking about rest and then I kind of got into art and, and like, where do these things, where does this all intersect in my complex thought pattern that I had while I was laying incapacitated over the last week or so? I think, first of all, that rest has been demonized in our culture and and so that got me thinking about this idea of what i said about learning the rules and then learning how to break them so so there are a lot of rules about rest in our society and we've talked before about internalized capitalism or this idea that your worth is tied to your production so those are the rules i'm talking about and a lot of us wear our weariness kind of as a badge of honor, you know, when you're t in conversation with someone, you might, I've, you know, I've heard it before and I've said it before. People will say stuff like, oh, you know, I only get four hours of sleep a night. I don't need any more sleep than that. I get way more done that way. Things like that. Or, you know, I haven't taken a vacation in three years. I, I don't have time for that. That's the kind of thing that we have really put on a pedestal, this idea that, that resting is weakness, that, that if you need to take a rest, that you're weak. And, and that's the rule that we need to learn to break. We've internalized these rules, and now it's time to break them and get back into the intuitive guide of, of how rest needs to look for us. So first of all, it's actually been scientifically shown through studies that production actually goes up with rest. When, when they study companies that provide more PTO or or extra kind of options that include things like rest for their employees, the employees actually do produce more. So that's, that's the first thing. It's not even true that not resting equals productivity. You actually need rest to produce. But beyond that, as I've said before, and I will say again, and I'm going to say again right now, your worth is not tied to your productivity. And what I mean by that is that you are no less worthy on a day that you lay on your couch unable to get up than you are on a day that you got 50 things marked off of your to-do list. And I think we have a really hard time with that. And that's kind of what led me to this topic. I what first The first day or so, I was in so much pain that I was really not thinking with my normal brain. I was sort of just doing whatever I could to try to get this pain to stop. But then after a day or so, I was still pretty much not able to do anything, but I had my conscious thoughts back. And, and I was thinking about all the things I needed to do. 
And, and, you know, I had this list of things running through my head. Well, I was going to do this and I was going to do this. I have a literal list on my phone of like a to-do list of things for my business that I need to get done. And then, you know, personal lists, like we all have these lists running through our head at any given time, you know, lists of things we need to get done. And, and on top of that or under these lists are a lot of guilt and shame. If you're a working parent, I guarantee I've never met a working parent who didn't feel guilt and shame about the fact that they are not, they don't have enough time to spend with their child or children. And, and so we've, we've sort of set ourselves up to fail. We set ourselves up to fail with all these lists, with thinking that we have to get everything done. And, and then when we have an opportunity to rest, like I did, again, being sick is not necessarily rest, but there was a point there when it transitioned enough that, that I had the capacity to rest. That's what got me thinking about this. I couldn't really rest physically. I couldn't enjoy my physical rest because I was focused on all of the things I needed to do mentally and emotionally and physically. But so I wasn't really resting. And that's kind of what led me to this topic. I realized here I am, somebody who meditates frequently and does a lot of spiritual work. And, and, and I have internalized these, this idea that rest equals weak, weakness or this idea that if I am resting, I am not producing. I'm not getting things done. And I need to go to bed checking things off my list. I need that feeling of accomplishment that comes when I'm like, yes, I, I did this. And yes, I did this. And yes, I did this. And it's all crap. That's not true. You know, I went through this whole period where I was really transparent about the struggles I was having with my body and the idea that my worth was tied to my body. And, and the fact that I finally had a visceral realization in my body itself and a real understanding in my emotional center that your worth is not tied to your body. And the re realization that I started having while I was thinking about this whole topic of rest was that, yes, I can tell you my worth is not tied to my production, to how much I produce, to how busy I am, to how much I get done, to how many things I check off my list. But viscerally in my body and in my emotional center, in my heart center, I have not brought that belief into my energetic field fully. And, and so that's what we're going to do tonight. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about. So how does rest look for you in different areas of your life? Again, this is a very individualized topic because what I might find restful, someone else might find anxiety producing and vice versa. This is a really, this is a very personal experience. And that's what got me thinking about it in terms of art, because art is a very personal experience. And, and whoever's listening right now, however many of us there are, we could all go into, let's say a museum and look at the same painting. And every single one of us would have a different response to that painting. And some of us might say like, oh, I find this really relaxing. And someone else might be triggered by it. And so it's the same thing. Like I could say, I love to do yoga. And people all the time tell me, oh, I can't do yoga. It's boring. I don't like it. it it's not my thing. So that's not restful for you. If it triggers anxiety, then that's not a restful activity. So one of the things we're going to do in our meditation tonight is, is to get into that intuitive space, that space of presence, and ask ourselves, what is restful for me? What is my body calling for in terms of rest? What is my mind and, and my emotional being calling for in terms of rest? What do I need to do to allow myself to release this idea that I must constantly be in motion and constantly be getting things done, that I'm not worthy if I'm not producing, how can I come back into a fully restful state? And being here every week is one of the reasons, one of the ways that I do that. One of the reasons I do this is because I do find this to be restful, even though there's a list of things I need to do to get here. I need to make my notes and I need to get ready for the show and I need to put my camera out. And, and then afterwards, I need to put it into post-production and get it onto the podcast. So, so right there, there's a lot of things I'm needing to produce. But when I'm in the show itself, and especially when I'm channeling the meditation, I'm fully present and I'm fully hooked into my intuition. 
And, and that alone can be restful. You can find rest in the worst conditions, the worst outer conditions. You know, you could be sitting in some place like a busy airport that does not seem restful at all. It seems very kind of anxiety producing or adrenalizing. And if you're able to access that state of presence and that state of intuition, then you might be able to find ways to rest, even in situations that seem stressful. But it all starts with internalizing that idea that your worth is not tied to your production. Your worth is not tied to how much you get done. Your worth is not tied to how many emails you were able to return today or how many phone calls you were able to make, how many things you were able to check off your to-do list. And I love a to-do list and I love to check things off. Today, I finally was able to check a few things off of a to-do list. And it is it gives you a very good feeling of accomplishment and it takes away some of the pressure of knowing that you have all these things to get done. But all of that is a projection. Last week, we talked about projections and we talked about the power of projections and we talked about how to get out of projections. So we have, as a society, agreed on this grand projection that we must be productive, that we must be busy, that we must be getting things done, that we have to be earning our worth in some way. And underneath that, when we get back to the existence, when we get back to the consciousness, which is really just another word for presence and intuition, when we come into the present moment, when we connect it to our intuition, to that divine source, that spark within us, there's nothing we need to do. There's nothing we need to get done. All of that is a projection. And that doesn't mean we're not going to go back into that and keep doing that and keep living in society. I used to talk about this idea that to live a spiritual life, a lot of people think you have to run away and, and live in a cave and become a monk or, or go to a monastery. And that's absolutely a route that some people take. But my personal spiritual journey is how do I live in that enlightened way? How do I live in that awakened way that I might be able to achieve if I completely left society while I'm in society? How do I help change society to reflect this beautiful spark, this beautiful inner being, this beautiful div divinity that lives within us that requires nothing, that requires no activity, that requires no production, that is just worthy because it exists. And that's my aim. That's what I am here to help other people start to see, start to wake up to. And that's why I do what I do. That I got off on a little tangent, but I always do, don't I? So the last thing I want to talk about is this idea of rest versus distraction. Because you can veg out, you can lay on the couch and look at social media or watch TV. And, and your intention is what makes that either a distraction or something that's restful. So if you're present and you have the intention of doing something, like I just need to turn my brain off for a while, I'm going to watch a Hallmark Christmas movie or whatever your jam is. I'm going to watch some anime. I'm going to watch a violent horror movie, which sometimes is my jam. Like if I do that with intention and I recognize that I am giving my mental and emotional state some rest, then that is restful. But if I do that without intention, if I do that without presence, if I'm just like, I can't handle this stuff anymore, I'm just going to veg out in front of the TV. Those are That's the same activity and, and done in one way, done in a mindful way, that's very restful or it can be. Done in a distracted way, that's not restful. So a big part of this is about mindful living. A big part of this is about intuiting what kind of rest do you need? Do you need physical rest? Do you need emotional rest? Do you need mental rest? Do you need all three of those? And then doing whatever that is with presence, 
not as a distraction, not because you're so overwhelmed by your to-do list that you just can't look at it for another minute. And so you're just going to look at TikTok for 45 minutes or whatever it is that you do. But putting that aside without guilt, without shame, that list will be there when you are done resting. So taking rest in an intuitive way, being mindful about it, being present with whatever activity or non-activity you choose that feels restful to you, and then letting go of the guilt, letting go of the shame, letting go of that internalized belief that if you are not constantly in motion, you are not worthy. You are not producing if you're not moving. I had a conversation with my husband the other day about how sometimes when I'm working, I'm not doing anything. Sometimes when I'm working on my business, I am completely motionless. I am in meditation. I am in an intuitive state and I'm receiving information. And that's part of my work. If I block off three hours in a day to just sit to somebody caught up in a projection, that might look like, what is she doing? She's just hanging out. But really what's happening is that I'm allowing space. I'm allowing, let's say, my physical body to rest or I'm allowing my mental body to rest, but I'm I'm doing it in a present way. I'm not doing it in a distracted way. I'm opening up to intuitive information. And then what comes through sometimes is like, oh, I need to take this in a different direction. I need to stop posting Wind Down Wednesdays on YouTube because that's not serving me. And, and when I do take action, when I do produce, because I will produce, I'm part of society, that's kind of where we're at now, I want to do it in a mindful way. I want to do it in a way that serves not just me, that serves those of you that I'm working with, that serves a broader collective, but also that serves this idea that I don't have to earn my worth. I don't have to apologize for blocking three hours of my day to sit and meditate and and brainstorm and and just kind of be in flow. Maybe I'm reading cards. Maybe I'm doing something with my crystals or I'm doing sound healing. When I'm working on myself, I'm absolutely working on my business because if I'm not in a good place, if I'm not healthy in my body and my mind and my emotional field, if I'm not expanded in my spiritual energetic field, then I can't help anybody else. And so rest is part of that. Rest is part of the way, not only we think about it in terms of self-care. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about all the, the abuse that we give ourselves, that we would never, things that we say to ourselves that we would never say to someone else. Like, would you say to someone you love, you know, like, you don't deserve a day off. What's the matter with you? Get back up and keep going. But that's absolutely something that probably every single person watching this has thought in some form or another. You know, you don't deserve to take time off. You need to keep working or, you know, you've got this list of things to do. You need to keep, you need to get it done or you're, or the shame starts coming up, you know, or you're worthless or you're not, you're not successful or whatever the thoughts are that come up, whatever the triggers are that come up. (sighs) You deserve rest. Your body deserves rest. Your mind deserves rest. And your emotional field deserves rest. (sighs) So let's normalize this. Let's start talking about it. I'm talking about it tonight. Let's talk about how important it is to take rest. Let's stop apologizing when we do take rest. I just did that earlier today. I apologized because I didn't get back to someone because I was in a medical state of incapacitation. And and I and I meant it because I know this person was waiting for a response, but also we should stop setting each other up to fail in that way. Having that understanding, letting go of that projection and and understanding that everybody's doing the best they can at any given moment. And sometimes that means you're lying on the couch and you can't move for three days. It's just how life works sometimes. So tonight we're going to do something a little bit different with our meditation. 
we're going to do uh, what I, I wrote down here, sleepy time. We're going to do a sleepy time meditation. And so usually at the end of the meditation, I guide you back out of it. I ask you to, you know, I tell you to open your eyes when you're ready. And, and I will end the show like I normally end the show. But instead of encouraging you to open your eyes and come back into the room, I'm going to guide you into the option of falling asleep. We've never done a sleep meditation. I've talked about how I've had a hard time sleeping. And, and so much of that, I think, is that internalized idea. You know, I lay down in bed and then I think, oh, I didn't do this and I didn't do this and I have to do this. This part of my body doesn't feel good. This, you know, oh, I've got feelings about this. And if I took the time to rest during the day, even just 10 minutes, if I scheduled some rest time for myself where I'm like, okay, <sighs> I'm going to rest my emotions, whatever that means, however that looks for me. I'm going to rest my brain. I'm going to rest my body. Then by the time I got to sleep or to sleepy time, then I would already be prepared. I'd already be in a state of rest. I'd already have worked through and processed some of that stuff that comes up around did I produce enough today? Did I earn my worth today? What do I have to do to earn my worth tomorrow? What do I need to produce tomorrow? Whew. No wonder I can't sleep. No wonder so many of us can't sleep. So what we're going to do in this meditation, we're going to get nice and present in our body and grounded. We're going to get nice and present in our mental space and invite some calmness there, some relaxation. And we're going to ask for a little bit of intuitive guidance about what, what our personal fields are calling for in terms of rest. What is your physical, mental, and emotional field calling for from you for rest? Because only you know the answer to that. So we're going to get a little bit intuitive about that. And then, as I said at the end of the meditation, it's my intention to leave you in a, such a relaxed state that you might just drift off to sleep. When I started the show, I called it Wind Down Wednesdays because Wednesday is halfway through the week and, and it sometimes it's kind of the culmination of all the stress and it's like, I got two more days in my work week and I just got to make it through the week. Like, whew, let's let that go tonight. Let's really wind down. And so if if you'd like to for this meditation, Get in bed. I said, put your put your PJs on, get in bed, get cozy. If you fall asleep, good. You can come back and do this again. I intend to do this meditation again myself. And, and I intend for it to bring restful sleep to both me and anyone else who listens to this later. So let's meditate together. So for tonight's meditation, find the coziest, most comfortable position you can find in this moment. Perhaps you're in bed ready to go to sleep. Perhaps you're in your PJs, somewhere comfy, lying on your couch, covered in a blanket. Perhaps you like to lie on the floor, but I actually encourage you to lie down if that's comfortable for this meditation. Or if you're sitting, really allow yourself to be propped up. Lean against something behind you. Put something underneath your legs or feet. The intention of this meditation is to bring you into such a state of restfulness that you could easily drift off to sleep during or once it's over. So get really comfortable. Make sure you're warm enough. Make sure you're cozy enough. Take a couple of nice, deep oxytocin breaths, breathing in through the nose, letting the belly really float out. <sighs> Sighing those breaths out with an audible ha sound that vibrates the vagus nerve. It instantly starts to bring you out of that sympathetic, that fight, flight, or freeze, that mode of feeling the need to be active and into the parasympathetic, into that ease response, into 
that calm, restful state. So take at least two more of those nice, deep oxytocin breaths. As you breathe in, you can pay attention to any areas in the body that are feeling uncomfortable or painful or tense. And then as you sigh that out with an audible ha sound, just let that tension, let that discomfort melt down through the legs and into the earth where it will be recycled for the highest good. Let go of any judgments that come up here. If nothing changes, that's okay. Take a few more deep breaths into that area and recognize that sometimes we can't let go of all of our discomfort and that's okay. We can still find rest within that discomfort, within that pain, within that tension. So continue to breathe deeply here for a few more moments, drawing that breath into any parts of the body that are calling for your attention here. <sighs> Start to lengthen your out breath here. And let this be completely individualized, but as you breathe in, count. Maybe you count to three or four. And as you breathe out, extend that count to, say, five or six. Just an, an extra count or two past your inhale. Lengthening the exhale draws us fully into that state of relaxation, of rest, of ease. It encourages this transition out of that fight, flight, or freeze and into the ease system, that parasympathetic response. And do that a few more times, breathing in to a count of maybe four. Breathing out to a count of six. You can release the ha sound if you'd like. But do breathe out through the mouth, just letting go of any remaining tension that's ready to be released. Releasing judgments of anything that's not ready to be released in this moment. But releasing whatever is ready, whatever you're able to release in terms of the physical tension or discomfort in the body. Take one more of those extended out breath breaths, breathing into whatever count you've established, and then breathing out for an extra count or two, extending that exhale, letting your body feel nice and settled here. If you need to adjust your position to get more comfortable, let yourself do that. Perhaps you're already feeling a little sleepy, a little heavy. Don't fight that. Let that come. You can come back and repeat this meditation. You're not missing out on anything if you drift off to sleep here. And then very slowly, very gently, bring your awareness into the mental space, into your brain, into your thoughts. And draw your next breath directly into the head space, into the mental space. You may feel like your thoughts are moving or spinning. Let go of the judgments. Ah, sighing this breath out. If you'd like to continue with that extended out breath, you can. But let go of the counting. Let this become a more intuitive here. Your body knows how to breathe to bring you into rest. So let the intuition of your body take over here. You're fully present in the body. Give the body some autonomy here. Let go of control and allow the body to relax. Allow the body to bring rest and ease into the mental state. As your thoughts come up, as they swirl around in the head. Don't fight that. You can picture your thoughts like clouds floating through the sky. Let Just let them go. You don't try to grasp the cloud and draw it back. Don't worry about remembering anything you need to worry about for tomorrow. Let go of anything that happened earlier today. Come fully present 
into the mind space and notice that if you can be present here, you'll start to discover some quiet, some rest in between your thoughts, in between your breaths. Even if it's just the tiniest space before another thought comes, before your next breath starts, focus on that quiet, focus on that presence. Feel the restfulness here in these little pauses between your breaths, in the gaps between your thoughts as they begin to slow down. And again, if you feel yourself drifting off here, let yourself go, let yourself sleep. Let yourself feel the worth of your body, of your mind, of your emotional state in this restful state. There's nothing that needs to be done here. You are perfect just as you are in your presence, in your divinity, in your beautiful, unconditional light and love and spark of joy. Being in rest is how we can rediscover this joy. Sometimes it's buried under those thoughts. It's buried under those to-do lists. Becoming quiet, coming present. Letting yourself be in the silence, even if it seems scary to you, even if letting go of distraction frightens you. You will find your spark there. You will find that intuitive connection, that connection to that divine light, that unconditional love that is the generator of the energy you are made of. So now as you're ready, if you're still awake, Let yourself tap into this intuitive flow that you've invited in through rest and relaxation and ask your intuition, what do I need to bring more rest into my life? How does rest look for me physically, mentally, and emotionally? How can I allow myself to release this idea that rest equals weakness, rest equals renewal and strength and reconnection to intuition and joy and love and everyone wants more love in their lives. So ask your intuition, how can I bring more love into my life through being restful, through just being, through letting go of doing, and allowing myself to be at rest in my body, in my mind, in that emotional center. And then just listen, see what comes up for you. And if nothing comes to you, that's completely fine. You can come back to this at any time and ask for this guidance again. Perhaps you're just feeling restful and sleepy and heavy. Perhaps you've drifted off a few times and you've lost your place in the meditation. You're not missing anything. Let yourself go here. Let yourself sleep if you're feeling called to sleep.
allow yourself to drift here, let go of any thoughts that are coming up, let go of that guidance that may or may not have come through. And just spend the last few moments here fully present in the body, feeling heavy, feeling relaxed, feeling sleepy or asleep. You deserve rest. You deserve relaxation. You deserve to reignite your beautiful divine light by giving it the space it needs to rest and relax and recharge. Feel that in your body, feel that worth, feel that divinity, feel that light. And know that light takes care of you, whether you produce anything or not, whether you do anything, this light is who you are, this beautiful light of being. Allow this light to hold you, to rock you gently into a restful night of sleep. Let yourself sleep now. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a beautiful, restful night of sleep and a restful week of sleeps. And I will see you next week for Wind Down Wednesday.